My name is Prem Gill, I'm a researcher at the British Antarctic Survey linked with the University of Cambridge's Scott Paylor Research Institute and also uh, WWF. I'm part of the Wildlife from Space team and we do loads of interesting research for a variety of species. The way we use satellites is really amazing because it's allowed us to really revolutionise the field of wildlife monitoring. With the data study group, the yeah. regions they've been studying uh -huh. are in the Antarctic Peninsula and Signy Island, yeah. and these are some of the most dramatically changing regions in the world. The sea ice in Antarctica is predicted to decline significantly by the end of the century. The insights we're going to gain from these regions is really going to set the precedent for our research in the future into climate change and what's going to happen with just not just seals but also penguins, polar bears, walruses and all the other species that live on sea ice. I have all this satellite data and it's very very high resolution. Each pixel is 30 centimetres. That's mm -hmm. the size of an A4 piece of paper. In theory, if you left your laptop in Antarctica, I could use my satellite images to find your laptop. Oh wow. We're now being able to narrow down and go into these remote and inaccessible areas of Antarctica, where if you're a researcher, mm -hmm. you can't go on foot. It's just too expensive, it can be too dangerous, it's just too logistically difficult. But with satellite images, you can be sat in your room and you can look at a bit of Antarctica that you know no man has ever seen and will uh -huh. perhaps never see again. At British Antarctic Survey, we don't have that artificial intelligence expertise, so we've reached out to the Alan Turing Institute where you have some of the top talent when it comes to artificial intelligence and computer science. With the data study group, there's lots we can do with this data, but we only have five days. Mm -hmm. So I decided to set them some very grand goals. Can you come up with an automated system to automatically count all the seals and automatically classify the sea ice into its various features and types? so we can build a habitat model to understand why the seals are in these regions of Antarctica and predict mm -hmm. where they're going to be and therefore predict what's going to happen when climate change starts to change the sea ice. And I was very sceptical. I thought, well, you know, this five days, I'm not sure how much they'll be able to achieve. But the project has been really amazing and they've done so well that we're thinking about future collaborations. We're thinking about year-long projects potentially to follow on from this. For the very first time, we've been able to look at very high resolution satellite imagery, extract all these different habitat variables, which are very fine scale and small scale, uh -huh. and start to understand the satellite images in terms of how a seal would view them, and stuff that the seal will look at visually right. and decide where do I go in terms of, well, how far is the water? How stable is this bit of ice? Uh -huh. And then we'll know, well, if this is gonna shift in this way with climate change, this is what it'll mean for seals. And this is extremely important because if you look at what's going on in the Arctic, you have a mass reduction in sea ice there. And the walruses that live up in the Arctic, they've been starting to come ashore more often and they're losing their sea ice habitat, which they had. So they all hoard onto the beaches and there's not enough space. So there's this awful footage and scenes we've seen where walruses are climbing up onto, say, cliffs and there's no room. Mm -hmm. They can't go any further and they essentially fall from the cliffs and die and that's all because there isn't any sea ice to help them spread out their habitat.